or develop their business in Ukraine. Today, we already have quite competitive IT market in Ukraine, represented not only by national, by national but also a large international, including American players as well. And given the pace of its current growth, IT industry will not will be for sure in the nearest future one of the driving forces of the economic development of Ukraine. That's why I can encourage American business to be part of this successful story. It's true that some challenges for project implementation in Ukraine still remain. But the government of Ukraine is committed to resolve all our standing issues through open dialogue with IT community and applications of the best available business regulations and standards in this sphere. The US administration, the European Commission, as well as other foreign governments have already recognized the progress made by the government of my country in putting in place together with the IMF and the World Bank a, compre a comprehensive economic reform program aimed at strengthening Ukraine's capacity to grow. Ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe that it's high time for us, it's high time for, for the United States companies to really discover Ukraine, a new Ukraine that has never before been so threatened from outside and simultaneously had such incredible prospects in the future. I want to thank for all, all, all of you for your attention and give a floor to my colleague who will be next after me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Igor. And I would like to let you know that this ambitious initiative was launched by um, Ukraine's Minister for Economic Development and Trade, Pavlo Sharameta, in early April this year. Unfortunately, we do not have him here with us today, but uh, we pre-taped his address. And uh, while he was in Washington, D.C. Uh, in mid-April for the uh, IMF Spring Meeting. And now we'll get a chance to, to listen to his address. soon. <laughs> that was not outsourced to Ukraine. <laughs> well, looks like the computer is sinking a little bit. So, you want to go to the next speaker? Uh, yes, I'm the next speaker, is me. So, if the computer doesn't. I always do this because this is the only thing from the technical standpoint that I can do, plug and unplug, and usually works. So let's see if my... <laughs> I'm not the one with the technical background here, as you could see, but let's see if it works. <laughs> Culture Just one second. Uh, I think it's Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Pablo Sharameta. I'm the economy ministry minister of Ukraine. Um, I'm delighted to have this chance to address you and to welcome you to do business uh, in Ukraine in the IT sector. Uh, this is one of the booming sectors uh, in Ukraine due to a couple of uh, reasons. Uh, number one is strong education. Uh, number two is the, the, the somewhat long-standing culture of uh, innovation and inventions that we had uh, in, uh, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, and then, of course, the, the global um, support and demand that we have uh, for the Ukrainian uh, products, both in outsourcing and uh, product companies. Uh, I met with uh, the representative 
representatives of the industry uh, already a couple of times with the IP Ukraine Association. We signed a memo together pledging that we will promote this industry in Ukraine. We have an ongoing dialogue. I'm hearing, I'm listening and hearing the issues that the companies have. They're trying to solve them together. By the way, one of them is the e-governance uh, in, in Ukraine that Ukrainian IT industry is helping us with. So, uh, summarizing, I welcome you uh, to this event, uh, and I would be absolutely delighted to welcome you to Ukraine, and uh, I'm quite sure that uh, the IT industry in Ukraine provides excellent opportunities to do a good business. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, we've heard the political statement, and now let's switch the um, topic a little bit. And now we will be talking, Silvina will be talking about the technical side of this uh, ambitious project and this initiative. Thank you, Silvina. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for being here, joining us for this event. I'm Silvina Moschini, the president of Transparent Business. I'm here with my partner, Alex, who is our CEO. And if technology permits, I will be sharing our presentation. And first of all, I would like to start by saying that today is the best time to innovate. We have seen a lot of disruption if you have seen around, for example, you have probably seen cars wearing pink mustaches. Companies like Lyft or other companies such as Uber disrupting the transportation, the taxi industries. Companies such as Airbnb disrupting the hotel industries. Companies such as WhatsApp disrupting the telecommunications industry. Things changing. However, there is one industry that has been around for over 15 years, the industry of outsourcing, that has not been changed much. And it really needs a revitalization. This industry has been around for over 15 years, but are presenting initially a lot of opportunities for companies to access talent at a very cheap price. But as time passed, the price of talent increased increased tenfold today. So what initially cost for a, pro a professional programmer in India $3, today it cost uh, average $30 per hour and it's a competitive rate with any other places in the world such as Ukraine, Russia or Argentina. Also, a lot of issues arise with outsourcing that puts this industry into crisis. These issues include lack of coordination, lack of, tra lack of transparency, and also lack of visibility for companies to know exactly what was happening, what is going on with the talent that they are hiring outside the company. So despite this limitation, this, this industry is a very sizable industry. If you look at the numbers, the outsourcing industry only in IT is around three Sorry, it's around $300 billion, 288 to be precise, last year. Infosys, a company alone, made $6.7 billion last year. And India, which is the largest player in the outsourcing industry, made $140 billion last year. This means 2.8 million jobs, direct jobs alone. So the opportunity is great, but there are a lot of limitations on this industry. And these limitations are the ones that we hope that with our technology and in partnership with the government of Ukraine, we will address, which is bringing transparency, bringing accountability, bringing more productivity to remote teams, even more productivity than what you have with the teams that you are handling or you're managing in your own office. Because as researchers say that during the day of work, almost 30% of the work is of the work time is spent in activities that are not related to productivity, such as social network, conversation between workers, etc. So we hope that we can help Ukraine to revitalize, revitalize and also disrupt the market or the industry of cloud sourcing by adding much, much more jobs to 
what the market has today. 1.5 million billion do, do, uh, jobs today created in Ukraine. We hope to take this to the next level via technology that we call transparent business. And it's a technology that can help Ukraine to offer talent to the United States and other, manner, and other markets in a transparent manner to offer a technology that can help the U.S. to easy coordinate their workforce, their remote workforce, to provide immediate, immediate feedback, to provide the scalability as well. And this technology we developed four years ago for our internal use. We have teams all over the world, all over the world, and these teams, of course, present an important challenge the coordination, the visibility, the productivity. So how do you manage to have the best talent available without the geographic limitations that today are presented for forming global, global teams? And for that reason, we develop transparent business. And just to give you an overview of how it works, this is your virtual company. This is your dashboard. In this dashboard, you can see every single person that is part of your team. You can classify by area, by region, by department, by any criteria that you deem appropriate. There you can see the persons and below each person you see some bars. If the bars are in green or in blue, that means that the person is actively modifying or working on the computer through keystrokes or mouse movement. You can also see where the person is based and what time is in, where in the person location. And this is particularly important because if you have a global team, you want to make sure that you call them at an appropriate time. And more important, you will have in your dashboard, in your virtual company, at, the, at your fingertips, in your laptop or in your iPad, information on how many hours each person of the team work during a period of time, during the week, and also the possibility to click one button and do video call automatically or send a message. So this is how the, your company, your virtual companies look, is what we call the team dashboard. But also, aside from the, the team dashboard, the platforms allows you to see exactly how much time is spent in each task. And this is a list of the contractors that you have the amount of time that they spend in each activity per day, you can also select based on different criteria. You can select a specific period of time, you can select a project, you can select a task, or many other different variables. And if you click on one of these green color buttons, you will go straight to a detailed thumbnail with the activity that each one of the workers, when they activate the timer to start working in your project because this is uh, sought to protect the privacy of each worker. The worker, such as when you do with Google Docs, when you are sharing information, have to activate the system and selecting which project he will be working on. So if it's green, dark, it means that this worker work longer hours. So you can click and see exactly in which this worker has been working on. Small thumbnails with a message on top with a queue, with a memo detailing the task. If you want to see them larger, you just mouse over or click on them and see a slideshow that is taking every three minutes. An estimate of 20, 20 screens per hour that will show you exactly the work progress. But what is more important is that this is a great monitoring tool, but as a manager, you're not going to be watching every single screen of your team. But one important thing that adds up to that is that the system collects data based on the input and based on the screen and assign it to the project creating a smart gun chart. This smart gun chart will show you exactly where you have a deviation, where you are spending more money or more time than planned. Because when you start a project, you create a project plan. This project, you will allocate time, you will allocate resources, and if this project is uh, done using transparent business technology, the system will collect every single detail of the work process of the worker and input it to this platform. There you will see if each milestone is delivered on time, 
it will be green. If it's not delivered in time, it will be red. You mouse over, you click, you can see exactly who was working on that, how many hours they spend and why they are over budget. There you can communicate and make corrections. But also important is to know that you can have access at your fingerprint to inf in detail information of every worker. In this case, for example, you can see the profile of a, a lady that is working for the company, their expertise, their skills, their qualifications. You can even uh, make an evaluation based on your, imp your impressions of the work with her. And also, eventually, through the association with the Ukrainian IT industry, add more talent to your private cloud and create your private cloud of talent. So basically, this technology, together with the talent of the Ukrainian IT industry, will help you to build your private clouds of talent. So also one important thing is that you can collaborate in real time through video clicks, uh, through video calls, just with a click, or whatever technology based on IP that you, you decided to install. And just, we've been around for over four years. First, as I said, we developed this as an internal tool, tool because we have the challenge of managing many people with different backgrounds in different countries. We took this tool commercially a few years ago. We have more than 5,000 5, clients in more than 100 clients. And we already receive uh, a lot of recognition and acclaim from different media such as Forbes, CNN, PC Wall, and many, many more. And just to, to wrap up, the differences between this technology that we call cloud sourcing, which is basically the next generation of outsourcing, outsourcing on the cloud, done transparently, done with accountability, with visibility, and with more productivity, are many, are many. One of them is real-time status and cost of every single task and project. You'll have a lot of business intelligence on your company. You'll be able to know exactly how much each phase, each uh, part of the project is costing you because also in the platform you can input the information on the internal cost and if you are, for example, a consulting company, you can input also the information of the external cost and have immediate access of the profitability of your business. Also, actual time work for each worker. So you can know who to reward and who to, you know, give a good talk and say, you are not working enough. What is happening with your productivity level? Detail activity summary and task list of each worker. Basically, you can see which person is assigned to which task. And it happened to us in several locations that we are working for, a, for example, large financial institutions that have many contractors and they are a bit concerned that not all of them are working as hard as they expect and as they are so many, it's very hard to keep track. With this technology, they not only increase the productivity because when people know they are monitored or they are potentially being monitored, they work more diligently but also they have the chance to stop and start the timer which activates the transparent business application anytime they want. So some companies decided to ban completely Facebook or Twitter because Forrester Research say that Forrester and Twitter take over 30% of the work time of the employees. We do believe that it's fair for employees to have their personal time and that is not a reason I would expect that from 9 to 5 or from 8 to 6, as is the work day for many, many people, they won't do any personal things. But with this technology, we just ask them not to bill us for that or not to bill our clients for that. So they can just put a post, do whatever they want to do. They work you know, in a much more flexible environment. It saves a lot of money and time because you can send people to work remotely. You can hire people based on the skills and abilities without you having to be uh, limited to whatever talent is available in a specific region. So there are some of the benefits, as I said also, uh, through cost by day, by month, by week, by any period of time that you want. Business intelligence is a very, very sweet spot of this application and I found as an entrepreneur very valuable to run my business more effectively. Also, 
the ability to coordinate and have visibility of how a project is evolving. Because when you outsource, and even if you uh, leave a task to someone in the same team, even in the same office, you don't know how the work is progressing and is it taking the right approach until a report is presented. And many times we find ourselves chasing people uh, for reports. And it can be as easy as to log in, check in your laptop and see how a project is evolving, if it meets the milestones suggested or not. And also the possibility to, at the finger uh, tip, just have the ability to communicate with anyone. So with this initiative, we are hoping to bring Ukraine a differentiator to take outsourcing to the next level, not only by pairing with the world-renowned top talent that Ukraine has, because that's something that it's a given fact that they have very, very great talent. By bringing this talent to the world, by making it accessible in a transparent manner, with accountability, with more productivity, with more value, basically breaking all the pain points of traditional outsourcing. So with this technology, we hope that we will take outsourcing to the next level, what we call cloud sourcing, we will help modernize Ukrainian economy, will help Ukraine to become the Silicon Valley of Europe, retain professionals in Ukraine, because brain drain is a very, very important problem for countries, especially for countries that are on a situation that it's unfortunate or, you know, may have great talent uh, taken away from their countries and, and moving somewhere else. And also supporting national independence. The, there is emotional a component of, of this. We fall in love with Ukraine, we develop this technology and we approach the Ukrainian embassy to try to help because we feel that there is a great opportunity for the world to have more of this magnificent talent and this will be something that we believe will be a differentiator to compete with an enormous market opportunity that today is taken by other countries, even though Ukraine has a significant share of the, the market of outsourcing and help them increase and help support international democracy in this fantastic area that is starting for Ukraine with the new election of the president. So if you have any questions, I will be here. Uh, my partner also, Alex Konanikin, our CEO, will be also at the reception and we are at your entire disposal to, to discuss this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for the wonderful presentation. And now uh, we have Volodymyr Shalkivsky, first secretary of the Embassy of Ukraine in the United States, who will tell us about the measures that Ukraine's government is taking to make the IT sphere is more visible, more productive, more effective. Um, Volodymyr, you have the floor. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's an honor for me to be here and to talk to you today and discuss Ukrainian IT opportunities. You know, it's always easy uh, to uh, uh, present something and uh, to sell it if uh, uh, it is uh, um, visible and uh, uh, easy to understand. IT business is uh, such thing
This is not just national priority backed by the government and created artificially. This is a profitable business with a bright perspective uh, in a European state. To date, uh, today we present to you government, uh, government's initiative uh, aimed to boost IT market. But we are not naive. We are not going to create something uh, that was created before and works perfect. We will try to play the role of facilitator rather than controller. Only public partnership uh, uh, scheme will work. Uh, as uh, Minister of Economy, uh, Economic Development and Trade of Ukraine, uh, Pavlo Sheremeta mentioned, uh, we, uh, uh, Ukrainian officials, uh, need to avoid two recently popular words in our official rhetoric. Permission system and Ukrainian peculiarities. We don't have to reform Soviet-style permission system for doing business. We have to change our approach completely and make deregulation reality. Uh, and we don't have to complain constantly on some local peculiarities. We have to use our strength and our opportunities to, uh, make, Ukrainian IT, to make our Ukrainian IT market transparent, lucrative and easy to work for international business investors and developers. Um, as uh, uh, you can see uh, today, uh, Ukrainian IT market is uh, um, uh, truly international business and uh, of course US uh, is uh, our uh, strategic partner in many many spheres and IT uh, sector is not an exclusion. So we are uh, uh, glad that so many uh, international companies find it's uh, attractive and uh, profitable to be uh, and uh, to be part of uh, our uh, economic uh, success story. Um, as for the main sectors of the IT projects in Ukraine, um, IT uh, uh, products developed uh, in Ukraine in, uh, last, during last year were purchased by the many international companies, but you can see that uh, uh, still there are plenty of opportunities in R&D, agriculture, education, utility and government services. And uh, mm, I also would like to, uh, uh, to mention that, of course, Ukraine is um, undergoing a quite complicated process of uh, ambitious reforms. Uh, preserving uh, our national economy is a matter of national survival for Ukraine. And uh, it's also a matter of maintaining uh, economic uh, 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 economic development and political stability, uh, uh, but uh, we don't simply wait uh, for the international community to <coughs> bail us out. We take uh, every possible measures to boost our economy uh, for the effective solutions. And uh, uh, our IT market is quite open, so of course uh, uh, IT outsourcing uh, takes uh, the biggest share. But uh, our internal market is, uh, development, is developing co quite uh, uh, fast and uh, the government uh, also tries to uh, uh, use this opportunity and employ uh, all uh, those advantages that uh, come, uh, that, uh, come uh, with the uh, IT industry. Uh, as for the uh, uh, regional distribution, um, I'd like to say that, of course, uh, um, Ukraine, uh, it's not only Kyiv capital. Uh, we have quite strong uh, um, 
uh, science schools all around the country. And uh, such uh, cities as Kharkiv, Lviv, Dnepropetrovsk are quite uh, famous already. And um, uh, of course, uh, um, taking into account that uh, uh, there is also a lower cost for labor and other expenses, it is very uh, uh, good, uh, well, it's wise to consider uh, investment in uh, the uh, regional, uh, uh, in the different regions of Ukraine. Um, as for the leaders of IT industry of Ukraine, uh, Altogether, we have around more than 400 companies that are quite active and uh, successful presently at, uh, at our market. Uh, but uh, the, the leaders are uh, pretty much uh, that you see. Um, uh, SoftServe and uh, Miratech are Ukrainian-based uh, companies. I mean that uh, uh, there is uh, not only Ukrainian management, but Ukrainian shareholders. Uh, and um, uh, EPM systems and global logic are American one. Uh, so, um, and as you can see, um, they have quite uh, significant uh, um, quantity of staff, of uh, IT personnel, and uh, they have quite good uh, regional distribution among their offices. So, um, um, it's quite remarkable to mention also that uh, the pace of the um, IT personnel uh, uh, increase is around 18% per year uh, in Ukraine among major companies. So it's a really booming market. And uh, um, last year, three, com uh, three companies with uh, large units in Ukraine, uh, EPM system, uh, Luxoft uh, that are here in this table and also one more uh, in Tetix uh, and uh, one Ukrainian company, Miratech, uh, number six, earned uh, mentioning uh, in the Fortune 500 among the world's best 100 outsourcing companies uh, uh, in the world. Uh, so as uh, uh, we already mentioned, uh, uh, and previous speakers also uh, mentioned it, uh, the um, uh, traditionally strong uh, science uh, school in Ukraine uh, is quite famous. And uh, um, uh, many of you probably will be surprised that Ukraine uh, possess fourth place in the world uh, in terms of overall number of IT professionals. Of course, uh, um, uh, this is a general number that it includes uh, IT, uh, um, uh, not only IT professionals, but IT service staff. But uh, um, I think uh, numbers are quite remarkable. So, uh, what is so specific about Ukraine uh, IT industry? I believe uh, we can uh, mention just two things. It's uh, quite uh, fast-growing Eastern European IT hub and very good uh, uh, cost efficiency ratio that companies can use for their benefits right now. Uh, and uh, it comes naturally that uh, all other elements uh, also develop, uh, quite fast developing, like for example, um, IT infrastructure and uh, uh, government, uh, Ukrainian government doing, uh, is doing its best right now in order to support uh, and not to create uh, artificial barriers on on the uh, on on the, this uh, um, on this way, and uh, we are confident that uh, IT industry, along with uh, uh, Ukrainian metallurgy and uh, agriculture, financial sector, 
will uh, be uh, among the uh, main uh, uh, driving forces of the economic development. So uh, the goal of the, uh, of the government, of course, it is uh, 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 the, uh, we, are, we are talking about the 10 year probably pr perspective uh, or at least five year. Uh, uh, create uh, all necessary conditions in order, first of all, uh, in terms of educational system, to have those professionals uh, grow and uh, get all uh, knowledge that uh, our IT uh, school can provide to them. And uh, it's uh, quite important that IT industry uh, takes part in this uh, uh, process. And uh, besides uh, regular universities and institutions, uh, I main uh, or the largest uh, IT companies already cl created their own IT schools, uh, and it is not only for the uh, um, IT personnel from their um, company. Uh, and uh, uh, to be honest, this is not just f about the figures to to get exactly one hundred thousand IT. Uh, uh, professionals. It's about the quality and uh, about the uh, uh, direction of the uh, development. And of course, uh, since it is quite profitable business, uh, the government uh, expects that uh, we, uh, Ukrainian uh, state, will also benefit from this uh, development. And. Uh, um, uh, I just wanted to thank you for your attention and uh, I'm sure that uh, you will find uh, um, uh, this uh, opportunity uh, interesting to discuss uh, uh, possible ideas uh, uh, regarding the uh, projects and investments in Ukraine and uh, uh, what we can do just uh, uh, approach us and uh, ask uh, about facilitation from our side. It's our job uh, uh, to assist you in your endeavor in Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, yeah, we're moving on. There is a simple solution. Mm -hmm. And the next speaker I would like to give the floor is Anthony Conti, a Chief Financial Officer of the EPAM company, who will share his experience and the experience of his company of working in Ukraine. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you, Tatiana. And uh, thank you for having me today. I'm uh, honored that you invited us and uh, want to hear from EPAM Systems. Uh, just to tell everybody a little bit about EPAM so you have some ideas to what we, uh, what we do. Uh, we're a leader in the software product development space, uh, which is a industry where we work with our customers uh, to help them develop the products that they are turning around and selling to their end customers. So we're developing a lot of you know, very high-end custom development applications for our customers. And we are firmly rooted in our delivery centers across Central and Eastern Europe. We have about 10,000 uh, engineers, IT professionals uh, globally across uh, 17 different countries on, in uh, four different continents. So we're pretty globally uh, diversified. We have about 700 million is our target for revenues for this year, so we've been growing quite nicely. Uh, we are very firmly in you know, the outsourcing space, but within a smaller segment, which is that product development support. It's roughly, according to leading uh, industry experts, about a $14 billion uh, industry that we're operating within. And uh, so there's a lot of headroom for us sitting at about 700 million. We see a lot of potential growth for the system, for EPAM systems into the future. Uh, we started about 20 years ago, and the founding of the company was uh, two partners, one partner here in the United States, one partner in Belarus, actually. 
And that is where the company grew up. And over those 20 years, we've continued to expand and grow. Uh, we are now a US public company. We're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And in 2005, we entered the Ukraine. And from 2005 to today, Ukraine has been probably our fastest growing, or I shouldn't say has been, uh, it was our fastest growing uh, region for many years. As of today, we have uh, just over 3,000 employees in the Ukraine. About 2,700 of them are IT professional engineers working on a lot of these cutting edge applications uh, for our customers. We are located in five different cities across, you know, spread across Ukraine, and our employees are pretty spread around there. Uh, we continue to grow. Uh, even in 2014, we added about 5% in the first quarter of the year to our headcount in Ukraine. So we remain you know, committed to the region and we continue to grow quite aggressively in, in the locations. Uh, our 2,700 Ukrainian IT professionals are products of some of the, you know, the top-notch universities from you know, the technical uh, universities within Ukraine. And we do a lot of work in the Ukraine with those universities. We have a lot of programs. We run a lot of student labs. Uh, and we do a lot of work uh, you know, around helping to build the curriculum and helping to build the, you know, the educational capabilities of these people coming out. Uh, and then hopefully they are coming to work with us or one of the other fine you know, employers within the Ukraine in the IT industry. So that, that's a very big piece of, uh, of what, we, what we get from being in Ukraine is that high caliber talent that comes out of those you know, very quality top notch institutions. Uh, most of the people we are hiring have what is the equivalent in the U.S. of a master's degree in some of these technical capabilities. So that's, that's very valuable to us, as you would imagine, when you're developing you know, these, these very cutting-edge technologies, when you're dealing with you know, technologies in, in the cloud or you know, the mobility applications or you know, the big data or business intelligence. These applications are you know, very cutting-edge, very new to the industry. It's very emerging technology-type work. So we need that you know, very top-notch engineer that can really help us kind of solve the problems for our customers, because that's really what we're doing. Um, and, and some of the, the things that the people in Ukraine are working on are very, very interesting. So you know, a lot of you probably are using products that you know, some folks in the Ukraine have, have developed, whether it's a, an app on your, your iPhone, you know, whether it's an internet search engine or some functionality that comes across from the internet search engines whether it's an e-commerce site that you use to buy those holiday gifts for your family and friends. A lot of that is exactly what we're building for a lot of very large multinational companies. We, uh, we do a lot of service to both the US and Europe. I would say it's about a 50-50 split for the Ukrainian uh, population of where they're working. And they're working in industries such as you know, banking and financial services. So two, two of our top clients, you know, UBS and Barclays, do a lot of work with both of those banks out of the Ukraine, developing a lot of their products and, and services. Uh, we work heavily in the uh, software vendor market. So historically, some of our key customers have been SAP, Oracle, and, and other big software vendors. We also then do a lot of work in the travel and consumer space. Uh, we've developed a lot of uh, travel booking sites, a lot of loyalty programs. So if you have uh, loyalty programs for your favorite hotels, or your airlines, Odds are EPAM engineers and, you know, and a good chance that you know, some Ukrainian engineers were behind that site that you use on a very regular basis. Uh, then we also work in uh, business information and media and a couple other smaller verticals that we've really you know, started to penetrate and we do a lot of interesting stuff. And all of that is really uh, due and our success is very much due to the quality and talent that we get from you know, the, the Ukrainian institutions and, and others in obviously Eastern Europe because we have other uh, representatives in, the, in that region. So, uh, as far as Ukraine goes, uh, you know, we've, we've been you know, very supportive of our employees in that region, and they've been very supportive of us. Uh, I have to say, the, the quality of the person that we're getting uh, to work for us has been outstanding. Our productivity measures have been off the charts in Ukraine. Our attendance has been off the charts. Even you know, the first you know, quarter of this year, we have actually seen higher attendance and higher productivity coming from our Ukrainian resources uh, than this same time last year. That's a, that's a strong you know, testament to the integrity of the people that we are getting within the Ukrainian market. It is also why we as a company remain very committed to the region, We're committed to Ukraine as a source of our talent and, and as a you know, continuing foundation uh, building our company. 
so you know having said that you know we're, we're very hopeful that all the events of the past six months are now firmly behind us the elections hopefully are setting ukraine on a nice path for future peace and prosperity that's well well deserved and, and you know welcome benefit and from our standpoint it's not just us as a company wishing that but you know we obviously have a lot of colleagues a lot of friends and their families live and work in ukraine so we are very much committed to the region very much committed to those people and ensuring that they continue to prosper and have a nice you know healthy and happy future with us at epam systems so i will be here in the reception you know talking if you have any questions uh, about epam systems or anything else that we do uh, or our activities in the region please feel free to come by i'm happy to speak to you and i again thank you very much for having us uh, epam systems is uh, very happy to be here and represent and you know, thank you very much for having myself thank you Thank you so much, Anthony. We really appreciate your input, and we appreciate the input of all the speakers today. And uh, this is conclude, con con concludes the official part of this event, but the most interesting part is ahead of us, because uh, after that, you are all cordially invited to the next room, uh, where we have a reception featuring Ukrainian traditional cuisine. That's one thing. And the other one is you're very welcome to share your ideas, your experience, talk to the speakers, to our experts, and enjoy the evening. Thank you so much.